Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pratyush Kumar and this video is all about family medicine. What's the future holds for the young PG graduates of family medicine in India? What's the status of family medicine globally? So these are some of the important points which I'll be covering in this video series of family medicine. So before I start, let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Pratyush Kumar and I have done DNB family medicine from Sajanga Ram Hospital, Delhi. And I did from 2013 to 2016. So now I'm going to talk about the training program and diploma. So now they have started a two-year diploma programs. In the first year, they will have a foundation course of 15 days. Then the general medicine, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology, general surgery, orthopedics, ENT, ophthalmology, CSC posting, dermatology, and physical medicine and rehab rehabilitation. In the second year, they are again going to be posted in uh, pediatrics, OBG, general medicine, and CSC, but additionally, there will be psychiatry, accident, and emergency, two months and 15 days. So, obviously, the more focus is on general medicine, pediatrics, surgery, and obstetrics and gynecology, but still, there they have also given a short postings in ENT, ophthalmology, orthopedics for 15 days each. How is the training program in DNB? That's a common question being asked on Facebook, social media, that how is the DNB programs? So what happens during your hospital postings? The candidate is posted in pediatrics for six months, obstetrics and gynecology for six months, internal medicine, including mental health for six months, emergency, ICU, including ICU for three months, general surgery for three months, and the short postings, orthopedics, ophthalmology, ENT, skin, and psychiatry for for three months but it may vary from hospital to hospital and also depends upon the candidates also so like slightly one month variation or two months variation you can see very well between different institutes there is a little bit of freedom is still there what are the procedures and skills you are going to learn so what you're going to learn is like venipuncture, gastric lavage, lumbar puncture, urinary catheterization, thoracosynthesis or parasynthesis, skin biopsy, electrocauterization of warts, evacuation of incomplete abortion, DNC, using partograms, FNACs, incision and drainage, suturing, dressing of open wounds, uh, reduction of paraphimosis, circumcision, water seal drainage, vasectomy, tracheostomy, proctoscopy, a refractory error assessment, tonometry, fundoscopy, removal of foreign bodies and eyes, otoscopy, rhinoscopy, laryngoscopy, foreign body removal in ear and nose, ear syringing, hearing test, transportation protocol of trauma patients, POP, removal of POP, first aid in traumatic fractures, CPR and defibrillation. So this is a comprehensive list of skills and procedures you're going to learn in during your DNB programs. So that's why you'll become a complete generalist. A family medicine specialist, how it's different from a MBBS doctor is because you are trained to learn some advanced procedures also. Skills and procedures will help you lead a good practice uh, at primary care, secondary care level. Learning these skills, you'll be able to resolve more and more number of cases. And there will be only few patients left who can refer to the right specialist. So what are the competencies? After DNB, you'll be able to effectively manage common diseases within the limited resource of family practice settings, common symptoms, illnesses, psychosocial problems, chronic diseases, common emergencies, identification of complex health problems and appropriate referral, promotion of health and prevention of diseases, first aid, CPR, transportation of patients, basic laboratory investigations, techniques and interpretations, Essential drug list, rational prescription and, and prescription writing, recognition and evaluation of conditions requiring surgical diagnosis and procedures, neonatology, growth and development disorders, genetic and pediatric illnesses, antenatal, intranatal and postnatal care, normal labor and puberium diagnosis and management of pregnancy related complications and awareness of family welfare programs, ability to care for disadvantaged groups in the community such as the elderly, mentally and physically handicapped persons. General epidemiological levels, prevention of control and common uh, communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases, soft tissues, bone and joint diseases, fractures, dislocation, sprints and PMR, recognition of common eye disease and diagnosis and management and referral of all emergencies in eyes, recognition and first-line management of common diseases of ear, nose and throat, prevention, diagnosis and management of common dermatological conditions, 
basic principles of anesthesiology, development of managerial skills, behavioral and social sciences related to family medicine, legal and ethical consideration in family practice, national health insurance schemes, health education, nutrition and dietetics, research methodology, palliative care, biostatistics, medical informatics, these database management and auditing basics of hospital management, management of basic dental emergencies, basics of health economics, and basics of resource and financial management, ability to teach and supervise undergraduates, postgraduates, and other levels of paramedical staff. So not only you are being trained in medical side, but you're also being trained for research purpose, for education purpose also. And that's the added benefit of doing a postgraduate program because here you also get opportunity to teach and train other UGs and in future, the next PG batch of students. Plus, you'll be also be uh, made aware of how to run a hospital or run a clinic through this, all the hospital management skills. So these all are the competencies for which you'll be trained during your postgraduate programs. So these competencies are very comprehensive. So you will be able to manage almost all the cases which comes in our daily practice and you'll be trained to treat those patients also. That's why the postings are as such that you'll be posted in medicine, surgery, ENT, ophthal, orthopedics so that you can understand the basics and also some of the advanced techniques which will help you to provide good quality, high quality care at the PSC and CSC levels. So what are the procedural skills? In proce procedural skills in anesthesiology, their intra endotracheal intubation is there, IV access is there, anesthesia is there. So that's the skill you learn in the anesthesiology part. In medicine, CPR is there, advanced cardiac trauma, obstetric life supports, lumbar puncture, pleural aspiration, peritoneal aspirations, drainage and tens and pneumothorax, NG tube, into intubation and lavage, intravenous, intramuscular, intradermal, intralesional inj injections, intra-articular injections and aspirations, how to take ECG. So these are some of the important skills which has got lots of huge role in prior practice or in the family practice. Even the government setup, sooner or later people will understand the role of family medicine specialist. Because, so you are going to provide them a comprehensive care not only in the field of medicine only, but also in the field of obstetrics and gynecology, like conduction of normal delivery, making and suturing of episiotomy, management of breech delivery, and retained placenta, repair, perineal laceration, vacuum extraction, forceps, uh, forceps did, uh, extraction, speculum examination, cervical spear, and IUCD insertions. In the ophthalmology, fundoscopy, removal of foreign bodies, orthopedics, like POP, splinting, reduction of small fractures and dislocation, application of cast. In ENT, removal of foreign bodies from nose, syringing of ear, nasal packing, use of photoscope, pediatrics, resuscitation of newborn, intraosseous infusions. So these are some of the important skills which come very handy in the emergencies. Pathology, you learn to uh, run your own path labs, how to check the hemoglobin levels, ESR, I know these all labs comes now nice it become more automated, but still you'll learn because you'll also have some postings in the path department also. In surgery, you'll have you'll come to know about assessment and closure of traumatic wounds, burns, incision, and drainage of abscesses, ingrowing toenails, excision and biopsy of superficial swelling, veny sections, catheterization, suprapubic stomy, cell circumcision, adults, IC drainage, tracheostomy and screening for breast cancers. So this procedural skills are also very comprehensive and during your DNB programs, during your three-year programs, gradually you'll learn all these skills and it will be very helpful in your future practice.